Allah Akbar, 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 Allah أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illa Allah. La ilaha illa Allah. Allah Akbar. 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 Allah والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وأتيع الله ورسوله ولا تنازعوا فتفشلوا وتذهب ريحكم واصبروا إن الله مع الصابرين Sadaqallahu Mawlana Al-Azim. I begin in the name of Allah, the most merciful and the compassionate. And then we praise and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank Him for His blessings, which we can acknowledge, which, can we be, which we can be selfish about. And then we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all those blessings which we are unaware of, which fall upon us indiscriminately, which Allah sends upon us like the rain. We praise Allah and we thank Him for all of these blessings. For those who praise Allah, Allah increases in blessings. And then we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send His peace and His blessings, His salawat and salutations upon the best of creation, the seal of the prophets, the beloved and habib of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah to extend these salutations and prayers upon all the prophets that came before Him. In particular, His family, His al, in particular, his companions, the Sahaba, and then all of those who follow them until the last day. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And we make a sincere dua that Allah blesses us and makes us from amongst this righteous group. Ameen. I shared with you the verse of Surah Al-Anfal, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَتِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ The theme is quite continuous in the Qur'an. Whenever we hear of the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the word Allah, it is always paired and partnered with the Habib of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa ati'ur rasul, wa rasulahu. Be obedient to Allah, submit yourselves wholly to Allah and His Messenger. Wala tanaza'u. And in this verse, it goes on to say, and do not quarrel and bicker with one another or you may lose heart and your spirit may desert you and then allah says wasbiru be patient for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with those who are patient and from amongst the sabirin allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has laid down the success of this ummah connected to two things it's a theme in the quran iman and a'mal iman and A'mal. You see these pairs in pairing coming quite continuously in the Quran. Ati'u Allah wa ati'u Rasul. You are obedient to Allah, you are obedient to Rasul. Aqimu salah wa atu zakah. Establish the five prayers and give the zakah. Yes? Then we have the one which is Iman and A'mal. Inna ladina amanu wa amilu salihati. Amanu wa amilu salihati. Those who took belief and they did good actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has paired. All of them, 
which literally are synonymous to one another. Belief and good actions, obedience to Allah and obedience to his Rasul and the Prophets, establishing the prayer, the rights of Allah, and giving the zakat and the wealth to the poor, the rights of the creation. They all come down synonymous to one another, all connecting us all to iman and amal. Iman and amal connecting us to the belief in Allah or the obedience of Allah and His Rasul. And they lay down the foundation for the success of this human being. Success which was attained in the past by the first generations, success which is attained by us here, and success which will be attained by those who will come after us. All of this. The criteria has been laid down by Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in His final message known as the Qur'an. I'm just trying to make this as a preface to what I'm going to talk about. A preface to how when we are happy, how do we reflect? When we are on the upper hand, when we are in the gains, what do we reflect upon? What do we see? Where did our deen and our religion and our actions take us? And when we are on a low, how do we reflect and how do we find our way out? I share with you the hadith of Imam Abu Dawud rahimahullah. It's an authentic hadith. A hadith which many of us are familiar with. And I wanted to take some lessons from it. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it's narrated by Thawban radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, يُوشِكُ الْأُمَمُ أَن تُدَاعَ عَلَيْكُمْ كَمَا تَدَاعَ الْأَكَلَةُ إِلَىٰ قَصْعَتِهَا Thawban says that the people will soon, the Prophet ﷺ said that the people will soon summon one another as people are called to a plate or a platter of food. The way we dine together, we invite people. It's one of the greatest things we love doing, invite family around, invite friends around, go out with the lads, dine. The Messenger of Allah told us this. He gave us the prophecy 1400 years ago and he is talking to his companions. He says, soon a time will come very shortly, O my companions, that people will summon one another as people are called to a plate of food. And what will they do? فَقَالَ قَائِلٌ مِّن قِلَّةٍ نَحْنُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ The people will soon summon one another. And they will fall upon you. They will fall upon you. They will devour you. The way that you call people around a plate of food and it is devoured. Someone asked, O oh, Messenger of Allah, what will be? Will that be because of our small numbers? Will it be that we are very small in number, O oh, Messenger of Allah, that you are giving us this prophecy? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, بَلْ أَنْتُمْ يَوْمَ إِذٍ كَثِيرٌ وَلَكِنَّكُمْ غُثَاءٌ كَغُثَاءِ السَّيْلِ No, he replied. You will be numerous and plentiful. So numerous and plentiful that you'll be like the foam and the trough that is carried by the sea. Now this is something which we perhaps cannot understand because we don't live near the sea. But those that live near the sea, or if you were to quickly Google and have a look at what it means that when a storm comes and how foam and trough appears on the shores in such large numbers that the entire coastal line will disappear. The shoreline will disappear. Can you try and imagine the shore, a beautiful scene at the beach, you can see the scene. I now want you to look at the sea, that same shoreline, and see it covered with a trough. A sandy trough of bubbles so far that as far as your eye can see the whole beach the whole area in front of the sea is covered and sometimes it is so bad that the wind will blow it out and the waves will bring it out and it will consume all the land around it the messenger of Allah said that you will be in such a large number perhaps a number so great that the ummah has never been this great large in number before closing to two billion they said, O Messenger of Allah, the Messenger of Allah then said, وَلَنْ يَنْزِعَنَّ اللَّهُ مِنْ صُدُورِ عُدُوِّكُمْ الْمُهَابَةَ الْمُهَابَةَ مِنْكُمْ وَلَيَقْضِفَنَّ اللَّهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ الْوَهَنْ And Allah will take the respect and awe of you from the breasts of the enemy, from the breasts of your enemy, the people that once looked up to you, the people that once dared not ever do anything, 
the people that once would look at you and see what you were doing and would follow you. You were the trendsetters. You were the ones that guided people. You will now become such people that Allah, who will do this? Who will do this? Allah will do this. Not a country of the world. Not a people of the world. Not a flag and nation of the world. Allah will then take out from their hearts the respect and awe for you. And then what will Allah do? فَقَالَ قَائِلٌ And Allah will then throw into their chests, feed into their chests. Allah will throw into our chests. What? Wahan. Wahan. Wahan was a word not used in Arabic. They said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, what is Wahan? We've never heard of this before. And the Prophet said, Hubbu dunya wa karahiyatul maut. It is the love of the world and the dislike of death. It is the love of the world and the disliking of akhirah, the disliking of our next level and next part of our journey. Love of the dunya and the disliking of the hereafter, the Messenger of Allah said. The Messenger of Allah in this hadith breaks down and diagnoses our problems. He gives us the cause of the problem and by diagnosing in such a way, he automatically tells us our way out sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about becoming people of substance. I want to take the first lesson from this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is not here to make us miserable. It is not here to make us feel weak and disrespected and disgraded. It is here to make us think about what the solution is. For the Messenger of Allah taught us that this will be done to you by no other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he taught us the cause. The hadith talks about what the solution is. It talks about and the companions asked, will you be plentiful? Will you have the upper numbers? Will you have the material? Will you have the wealth? Will you have the money that me and you perhaps measure as means of success? When the messenger of Allah's companions, they went to Sham, when they went to the Byzantine, and they went to the Sassanid Empire, the Roman and the Persian Empires. What were their numbers, my brothers and sisters? Were they large in number? Were the Sahaba large in number? Were the Messenger of Allah was standing in Badr with an army of 3,000, with an army of 1,000 in front of him. And they were 313. Was it a matter of numbers? The Messenger of Allah said, your numbers will be enormous. Like the froth and the foam that appears on the oceans. But like the froth and the foam that appears upon the ocean, you will have no weight. Why? Because with Allah there is a rule. And that rule is of quality, not quantity, my brothers and sisters. Allah does not need quantities for a Muslim, for the Ummah, or for Islam to be on the upper hand or on the rise. Allah needs quality and quality is always small in number my brothers and sisters why do I say this because this is a hope for us this is a way out of us how is it a way out for us because every single one of us sitting here today can become that quality we have the means in our capacity we don't need the million man march. We don't need the billion man X, Y, and Z. We need to be people of substance. We need to be visionaries, not reactionaries. We need to have people that plant seeds today for our children of tomorrow and not people that are always on the reaction. We need to have people that are thinking for the sake of Allah and His Rasul, are thinking for Islam, are thinking for Mecca and Medina, are thinking for Masjid al-Aqsa, are thinking for the Muslims, wherever they may be in the world. They are always visionaries, thinkers. They are planning and all they have to be is small in number. Salah al-Ayubi, 
May Allah be pleased with him. He was a single man, but he was a man with a mission. The likes of many of our scholars who came before us, they were people that had a vision. They were people that had a destination to get to, and they gave their life for that cause. And whether they saw their fruits in their life or they left it for their generations and the people to come after to pick up those fruits, they did what they did. So my first message from this hadith that could be perceived as one of negativity, perceived as one of sadness, is rather one of good news, saying that we don't need the large numbers, we don't need the oil reserves, we don't need the platinum and the gold and the bling bling. All we need is quality. For quality in the Allah with Allah is the, is the yardstick for Allah's help. Number two, who are you? The Quran said, Wa ati'u Allaha wa ati'u Rasul. Wa ati'u Allaha wa Rasulahu. Be obedient to Allah and His Rasul. So who are you? What is our identity? We have to ask this question and we have to make decisions because a key to being from amongst those quality people that are quality, not quantity, is a clear identity. And that identity first of all is Ibadur Rahman. We are Abdullah, we are Amatullah. We are a servant and a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first purpose of this human being is to learn to be a servant of his creator. There is no greater blessing than being a servant of Allah. There is no honor greater than being called a servant of Allah. The Messenger of Allah said that the best of names are Abdullah and Abdul Rahman, the servant of Allah, the servant of the merciful and compassionate Abdul Rahman. When we put place ourselves in the servitude of Allah and we become Abdullah, then that seed sets into the ground. Then that seed sets into the ground and it prepares for germination. It prepares to become that tree, that shajaratin tayyibatin, that strong tree, asluha thabitun wa far'uha fis sama, whose roots are rooted strongly and firmly into the ground and its branches wave high above the land. The servitude of Allah is our identity. Abdullah is our identity. La ilaha illallah is our identity. None besides whom do we lower our heads and we place it on the ground and we rub it on the ground and we make iqrar and acknowledgement that, oh Allah, you alone do we acknowledge as the one for whom we will wake and the one for whom we will die. Qul in hayati. وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهِ وَبِذَلِكُ أُمُرْتُ وَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Ibrahim salam said to them and this is one of the most beautiful verses of the Holy Quran say to them that my living and my dying my sacrifice my wealth is all for Allah لا شريك لا I have no one but him my every step, my every movement, my every breath says Allah, Allah. And what is our identity? Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every limb of ours drips the sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is a manifestation of the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our utterances, our mornings and our evenings, our time with our families, every expression that we can express is one which comes from the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is our identity. This is key to becoming quality again, my brothers and sisters. I am giving you medication. I am telling you the way to come out of this. And that is to be firm in your identity. Be firm in whose ummatis you are, whose nation you are. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bring ourselves up on this method and bring our children 
Cultivate our children on the same method, like the seed that is planted. For the seed must go into the ground. It must be obedient and push itself into the ground for it to grow. And these were the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Messenger of Allah cultivated them in a way that they became people that were not skilled as the Romans and Persians. They had no comparison to the Romans and the Persians and the superpowers of their time. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used them to bring down the powers, to bring down, if I could use the word, cobwebs. When you bring down cobwebs, my brothers and sisters, you don't need to be a person that can bench press 200 kg. Grandma, with her feather stick, can bring down cobwebs. A child of a few months can bring down cobwebs. And all which is planned around us, and all this creation and power that I am so impacted by, is a cobweb in the law with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We just need quality, a few quality people to come up and to remove those cobwebs. Our identity is who we are. And I always am inspired by a quote by Malcolm X, where he said that if a man stands for nothing, he will fall for everything. If you are not La ilaha illallah inside and Muhammadur Rasulullah outside, then you stand for everything. You will walk the talk, you will walk the walk and talk the talk of whichever environment you are in. And we are told that do not be dead fish, for dead fish is what goes with the flow. If there is a river flowing and you throw a fish in it, a living fish will go upstream. But a dead fish just goes straight down. Today, I have become a dead fish. I just go with the flow. And to bring a change, all it takes is a couple of us. A few from the Ummah to stand and start living and being alive and living by what we believe. The foam, it comes on the waves. We've become the foam and who are the waves? The hadith I was talking about, the Messenger of Allah said you'll be plentiful like the foam and the froth that is on top of the waves. We've become the foam and the froth but we were supposed to be the waves, the movers, the bringers of the torrent the waves that brought everything ashore. We were once that ummah and it flipped upon us and we now become the froth and the foam, plentiful but useless. We now need to return back to being the waves, the waves that become the movers and the waves that can make a difference for the ummah. And finally, the blame game is not a game which the mess that, that the people of Iman have. We are not here to stand and look at our problems and then bring the blame game. Look what's happening in my home country. Look what's happening in that country. Look at so-and-so leader and so-and-so nations. We do not play the blame game. We point the finger at ourselves and we say to ourselves that we are the ones that can bring the change. People who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. We shouldn't complain about others small or greater when the actual problem is myself and until we are not able to admit that we are part of the problem then we can't understand that we are part of the solution we my brothers and sisters are the solution i promise you by allah there is no messenger of allah that is going to come and take us out of the situation we are in for he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the seal of prophets khatam and nabiyin I promise you, Umar Abu Bakr, Uthman Ali, Ali Bayt, and the Ashabu Rasulullah are not going to rise from their graves and solve the problems for this Ummah. We are the deputies and the viceroys of Allah. Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. I made this man my viceroy on the earth. And we are all the ambassadors of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for he passed away and no more messenger will ever come hence the duty of the propagation of the truth of the haqq of the clear guidance is upon each one of you and me not every scholar but every single one of us has a responsibility as being in the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and being the ambassadors of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
You are the Khalifa of Allah, the Viceroy of Allah. You are the ambassador of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you are the receiver and the guardian of the Qur'an. Allahu Akbar. You are the inheritor of the Qur'an. You and me inherited the Qur'an. It is our inheritance, not the inheritance that we receive from our mothers and fathers and grandparents. You inherited the Qur'an. It is the irth, the mirath of the believing man and woman, the Qur'an of guidance that we have. We must understand that we are the problem and we are the solution. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to wake up and ponder over this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us insha'Allah and make us the best of people. I end with one hadith. Sorry, it's not a hadith. It's a saying. It's been narrated by many different scholars, but it isn't a hadith. But I like the meaning of it. And the meaning is, can be clearly taken from the same messages in the prophetic traditions and the Quran. And that is, Imam Ghazali narrates this as well in his books. Ya abdi, anta turid wa ana urid, wa la yakunu illa ma urid. O son of Adam, I desire and you desire something. But only what I desire actually occurs. You have a desire and I have a desire. O my servant, O my abd, you have a desire and I have a desire. But remember, only what I desire is going to happen because he is the Lord, Rabbul Alameen. But if you submit yourself to my desire and obey me, you submit yourself, aslama, you become a Muslim, and you submit yourself to the will of Allah, what He has decreed and asked us to do, what will happen? I will give you what you desire. Allahu Akbar. I will give you what you desire when you submit to me. For a believing man and a believing woman who submit to Allah and His Rasul, this is our identity. This is the point I'm making. Who are you? This is our identity and understanding. Is that when you submit to Allah and His Rasul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you put your desire to the desire of Allah and His Rasul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do what? Allah will give you what you desire. What you want. Allah will make your life easy. Don't turn away from Allah and rebel from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because whatever happens is going to be whatever He decrees. It is His desire which is the final desire. And if you do not submit yourself, you turn away from salah, you have no time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by disobeying Him, then I will tire you out in trying to achieve your desires. You have loads of desires and I will finish you and tire you out and annihilate you in your desires. I want to do this and I want to do that. I want to build this and I want to do that. And whilst doing so, you break every command of Allah. You break every halal and haram. You break every relationship that you have with your family. You break every command of Allah to achieve your desires. Allah says, I will annihilate you. I will tire you. I will finish you in trying to achieve your desire. But remember at the end, only what I desire is what will happen. Back at the end of the day, only that will happen. What Allah has decreed. So my brothers and sisters, don't fool yourself and don't make a mistake. Don't tire yourself out in this dunya. Don't destroy your family. Don't destroy your wealth. Don't destroy your akhirah by trying to achieve that which Allah dislikes. For you will only tire yourself and you will never attain success. And only that will happen what Allah has desired. وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ لُمَّتَ لَوْ اجْتَمَعَتْ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَنْفَعُوكَ لَنْ يَنْفَعُوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ لَكَ Ibn Abbas, remember that if the entire ummah comes and it collects to you and they try and benefit you, they will never benefit you unless what Allah has decreed to benefit you. And remember, if the entire ummah comes together and it tries and harm you, لَنْ يَدُرُّوكَ إِلَّا مَا كَدْ كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَكَ it will never be able to harm you. The whole of humanity, the whole of creation, every country and its military tries and harm you. They can never harm you except which Allah has decreed. That's why I said this saying is, this saying is reinforced by many verses of the Quran and many authentic ahadith. May Allah give us the tawfiq. My brothers and sisters, we are chasing the dunya. We are chasing the dunya and our teachers would say the dunya is your shadow. And your shadow is a gutya cheese. It's a small little cheese. It's a filthy thing. You don't want to follow your shadow. You chase a shadow, it will take you to dirty places. You chase your shadow, you'll be running through the mud, running through the, running through the streets at night. 
You'll be running into, running past bars and clubs and places where you don't want to be. You will be uncomfortable, but you are chasing your shadow and you are chasing it like a dog. You will run into places that will, will disrespect you, which will harm you, but you end up chasing your shadow. And what will happen? Has anybody on this earth ever caught their shadow? لا كلا والله You will never ever be able to attain your shadow. Chase your shadow, grab your shadow, substantiate, take your shadow. You can never do it. But our teachers would say, turn around and live your life as a Muslim. Walk the walk and talk the talk of Allah and His Rasul. And what will happen? Your shadow will come running behind you. This dunya is your shadow. You chase it, it will degrade you and make you filthy. You put your back towards it and move forward and it will chase you like mad. Your rizq will come running to you. وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْطَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا Allah says, order your family to pray salah and be firm upon it. نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُكُمْ We are the ones that give you sustenance. We don't want risk from you. You pray salah, I will throw risk at you. You submit to me, I will send the sustenance to you. The Sahaba who had nothing became the owners of the Persian and the Roman Empire in front of their own eyes whilst they were alive. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to understand this. Give us the ability to change the direction of our lives. And may He give us the ability to learn the faith. My brothers and sisters, it is only through learning can we gain the qualities which I've spoken about. Iman and A'mal are through understanding the Qur'an. The A'mal and the Iman which Allah describes in the Qur'an is what we are attaining. The actions which the Qur'an talks about are in the Qur'an. We have to learn about the actions of the Qur'an. The descriptions of Iman and faith which Allah wants from us in the Qur'an. We have to look at the stories of the Prophets in the Qur'an again and again and ponder upon them and see the lessons that Allah taught us through all the mighty messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no knowledge no deen no knowledge no deen no knowledge you have no roots in the ground no knowledge you have no building you have no foundation under your building you will fall and you will break very quickly may Allah make us grounded may he make us founded through spending time with our scholars and formally learning knowledge أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثيرا Indeed in the way of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم is the best of examples for those who believe in the day the final day and believe in the akhirah my brothers and sisters As I move forward I mention to you a few things Alhamdulillah this, the, 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 the vehicle which creates communities the universities the factories which create people of substance they are called, in the language of a Muslim, a masjid. They are called a masjid, a mosque. When we put ourselves in the masjid, we are created, we germinate, we flourish. It is the greenhouse for a spiritual seed. And as such, alhamdulillah, we have been on a journey at the Abrahamic Foundation for a very long time, 10 years plus now. And inshallah, on Friday the 16th, we will begin the five prayers in our masjid. Say Alhamdulillah. And the vision that we've had at the beginning is creating a place that looks like the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A masjid that is a center for learning, a masjid that gives you access to scholars and imams, a masjid that is there for mentoring, a masjid that is there that can offer you advice, a masjid where everyone feels welcome, young and old, brothers and sisters, Muslim and non-Muslim. A place where people are not judged in the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Literally the mosque of the Messenger of Allah, it had no doors or windows. It was open for all. We like to call our masjid a masjid without walls. A masjid that can go out into the community and bring the community in. So Alhamdulillah on the 16th, we hope to have the grand opening. Those of you may have met, our senior Imam is also joined our team, Sheikh Muhammad Ali Bilau. And this is all a part of investing in our communities. Investing in the Ummah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As such, I ask you all in these final stages to do what we are supposed to do. When the Messenger of Allah arrived to Medina, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before he even found his own home before, before he even built his own home he built two masjids he entered Medina and built the first mosque in Islam Masjid Quba 
And then a few days later, he made his way into Medina and he laid the foundation stones of the Masjid al-Nabawi al-Sharif, the Prophet's mosque, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the greatest priority of any believer. So we have a lot of challenges and demands that we have in front of us. One of them is that we have to get that building ready to be able to pray salah in here because we need to kick out the classes, we need to kick out the uh, youth center from here to clear out this space for us to have five times salah here. So we've, alhamdulillah, I think 95, 98% complete over here. In the next two weeks, we need the carpet changed in here. Alhamdulillah, we had speaker works done today. It seems they are working, alhamdulillah. Speakers have been fitted downstairs. There's some more work that we need to do on speakers next week that will take place. As you can see, our lights all need changing. They are ancient in here. Those who pray here, you'll know our light switches are very strange. You have to massage them 15 times before they decide to turn on. And the whole building is like that. The downstairs classroom, in the front room, we have one light left of four. In 10 years, when that goes, it's gonna go kaput. So we have the lighting that we need to change. We, have, uh, we need to get some blinds on here because when Asar and Maghrib enters, it's, it's, it's blinding in here with the sun setting over there. So there's a lot of things that we need to do. We've got costings of about 10,000 pounds that we have, carpet, underlay, fitting, uh, the lights being all replaced in the entire building because we're doing it and uh, getting blinds in this section and the ladies section downstairs and a few other things. So I invite you, as you will leave, you will see a barcode. It's only 100 people donating 100 pounds. 100 people. There's more than 100 people here today. And there's more than 100 people that use the Abrahamic Foundation. As you leave, scan the barcode, or if you don't, don't put it in the buckets because the, the office will lick my bucket money. Make sure you give it on that page. On that page, make that donation because that's fixed for Mawlana Nasir to deal with the building and get this place ready in two weeks' time, inshallah. May Allah increase you and may Allah make you from amongst those people who create communities and make dua for us because we still have a lot of plans for the building next door. On the 25th of February is a very important date for us all. We'll be celebrating 10 years of our work. There will be a, char there will be a charity or a sort of a community celebration dinner and I will invite you all to, uh, inshallah, take part in that. Come with your entire families and let's celebrate the impact and the achievements of what we have done as a community. And that is what we should celebrate. The Quran says, and in affairs of the deen, should you compete and fight with one another and race with one another. الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا ويذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى اعلى واتم واكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون اقيموا صفوفكم ستريم دروز As the buckets go around this is the normal masjid donations as the buckets go around there's just a few announcements that I need to make